all right okay so guys today's topic is what we are going to talk about is called as vpn okay now whenever we are talking about vpn okay what we have to understand is that uh, a lot of whenever we are working on um, you know uh, infrastructures or companies multiple companies mncs and uh, you know they have a lot of uh, locations branches and every branch in some way or the another has to be connected with the headquarters okay a reason um, you know so many reasons you can have you need to share resources or maybe there are servers which need access from the branch okay so what you can do is you need to have a mechanism you need to have um, a feature or a technology that can help you access the resources over the internet plus it should not all hamper your data meaning nobody on the internet nobody on the isp should be able to understand that what exactly is it that you are trying to access again data is confidential it is private it should not be shared between you know millions of people who are on the internet right so you need some kind of a security even when you are using a public medium you need some kind of a security okay all right now let's um, understand that see over here you can see the world of vpn now i have what i have done is that i am i have um, you know um, divided this into couple of um, um, you know subdivided this to a couple of topics okay now one is what then types then composition encapsulation and then we have the questions okay what i mean is that you will be first of all we'll be we'll understand what is the vpn okay as a as a technology as a feature as a functionality as a method okay what exactly this thing is then we are going to look about the types how many types do we have and what does it matter okay composition basically means that what is constituting the vpn what are those small gears which is making this vpn vehicle work okay so that is what we are going to work now the what the type and the composition okay then encapsulation so encapsulation is i mean to give you just one single one line have you have you seen medicines which are you know inside a capsule yeah small small you know balls of powders and uh, white powders and that those are you know inside a capsule so that is this is basically called as encapsulation okay now we'll we'll talk about this in great detail and what encapsulation with the vpn means and then finally questions whatever your questions are i um, will be happy to answer those okay now first thing first what okay see whenever you are talking about the vpn right we have to understand the concept first what exactly the concept is and why do we need it what is the use case okay see uh, whenever we are talking about this concept right that what is a vpn okay we need to understand uh hold on so we need to understand that for example let's say i have a pc okay this pc is connected to uh, a firewall and this firewall is connected to a internet or the isp okay now let's say for example this isp is then connected to a server and let's just just say that this is google okay now if i have to access anything on the google side okay or or you know what let's do one thing let's rather than saying google i'll say that we have a server okay and this server is behind a router this router is a branch router and this branch router is for let's say xyz.com and you are over here which is the headquarters okay and this is a user pc 
so the user pc has to access the server okay let's say this is a file server okay now this file server let's say let's say has some critical data that needs to be accessed now before you access this critical data you have to travel right you have to travel through the firewall through the isp through the router and then finally you reach this data right so before you go ahead access the data you have to make sure that this path that you are taking this path first of all is secure right it should be confidential okay um it should have the integrity okay now when i say integrity what i mean is that nobody should be able to tamper with your data that's what i mean with the integrity okay and some kind of um, i mean of course availability availability basically means that your resource should be accessible okay all right so these three are called as the three pillars of vpn are you getting me it is called as three pillars of the vpn because any vpn okay any virtual private network needs to be confidential okay when i say confidential what it basically mean is that nobody should be able to check what is it that you are trying to access then it has to have the integrity meaning you your your data should uh, not be tampered okay and availability of course is that your resource should be available before even you can access it right so this confidentiality integrity and availability which is called as cia okay this is like the three pillars of the vpn every vpn has to adhere to these three rules okay only then it will be called as a vpn technology is this clear all of you yes or no type in the chat box please now the concept is that whenever you are in a private space you are going into a public space okay to access something which is again private then you need something which is called as a vpn okay so if you are private okay and you are accessing something private but to access that resource this is the source this is the destination to access that resource you have to go through the v, uh, go through a public medium isp is a public medium internet is a public medium you have to go through a public medium then you need something which is called as the vpn so that it will basically tunnel your data when i say tunnel the data what i mean is that once the data you know it goes inside the tunnel okay from the outside you i mean even if you are over here you won't be able to see what information it is having right now okay because it is tunneled okay have you have you seen you know an underbridge right what happen is that there is a you know let's say bad drawing but um, let's say there is a car <laughs> so looks like maruti 800 in 1960s okay so let's say there is a car and this guy wants to get in okay so if it is on the outside absolutely anybody can see it okay anybody can see okay that there is a car which is going out okay going inside now let's say for example you are over here okay on the top or let's say let's say you 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 hire a helicopter okay now you are inside this helicopter okay so if you look from the top once this car is inside this tunnel can you see that in can you see that car can you see that whether the car is actually going on the other side or is it maybe you know taking a u turn and 
coming to the side from where it came from okay you cannot really do anything and even if the car stops over here and stays over there you you do not know okay because once the traffic or once the car gets into the tunnel from the top or from the outside you do not really know what is happening right so this is what an analogy you can fit over with the vpn as well okay that once the traffic or once the data all right if it reaches or if it goes inside this particular tunnel okay that data is hidden from anybody who is from the on the uh, on the uh, isp side or on the internet okay so if there is a hacker attacker penetration tester or somebody who is just trying to check what exactly your data is he wouldn't be able to know okay that is why you need vpn which is called as virtual private network now this should make sense to you right because i am a private in information and i want to access private information right why virtual have you seen any physical stuff on the internet no everything is virtual right everything everything is digitalized so virtual and network of course because it is just not one pc okay it could be a whole segment of slash 24 so it could be a class c or class b or even class a or it could, add, it could also be a classless network okay my point is it could be just one single machine it could be a whole network that's why you call this vpn a vpn because it is a virtualized network of private information which is uh, you know which is using a public media okay so nobody would be able to understand that what is going through the tunnel and you being a uh, private information would be able to access the other side with no problems at all okay is this much clear yes or no chat box now let's understand the use case see let's say for example i am um, you know i am traveling okay so i am traveling and let's say for example i am a marketing guy i am a marketing guy okay i keep on traveling you know multiple locations and places and um, you know um, i have to you know let's say for example i'm mark you know sales and marketing i am going to make a sale okay to my vendors or my clients and to make that i have to make sure that i keep on visiting multiple locations and clients so if that has to happen okay i cannot be at one place but i have to show my clients the data the files and everything okay i cannot keep those data and files on my pc why because of security reasons the company has asked that you cannot keep any private and confidential information on your laptop if you want that information just connect to our network so what this guy will do is it will just you know take whatever isp you know let's say he's in a cafe or the client location whatever it is okay he is in a client location or a cafe he is connecting to the isp then from the isp he is connecting to your let's say abc.com network and over here you have the server okay but if he has to do this he has to make sure that the data or the traffic which goes behind these two system needs to be done why good question because if it is all plain text or let's say if it is not tunneled anybody would be able to see over here that what information that you are trying to access and it can capture that information it can steal that information and can use that information against the company or the client or it can basically sell that information to somebody else or, or maybe a competitor for a for a greater price okay and these are all real issues right now okay so if you are a sales and marketing guy what i mean is you are a remote user can i say this can i say it's a remote user because this guy keeps on hopping multiple locations right so he he's not a fixed guy he is not a static person he is not a you know um, a local person who just stays at one look particular location no he keeps on moving from place to place to place so he's a remote user yes if he's a remote user he has to we we need a vpn that can cater to the need of uh users who are basically moving from one location to the other hence you have the name remote vpn
okay that is why you need something which is called as a remote vpn so this is a use case right this is a use case that if somebody is always keep on moving one place to another you need a vpn technology that could help you to you know be mobile be be anywhere that you want but still be able to access resource right that is one reason one one way of uh, understanding this another way is let's say for example um you know i have a firewall over here we have an isp another firewall okay and then we have a switch connected and then we have the lan segment okay this firewall is also connected to a switch and then we have a lan segment let's say over here we have 192.168.1.0/24 and let's say over here we have 10. 10.10.0/24 now uh, let's say for example i have one guy over here who wants to access and and a resource over here okay so this is my destination and this destination is basically not just one pc it could be the whole network or it could be just couple of use couple of pcs point is that i am stationary okay now when i say i am stationary why am i calling myself as stationary because my system which is over here my laptop over here is connected and binded to my desk yes and i have to if i have to work i daily come to my job 9 o'clock i open my laptop i do my work okay so my station my look my laptop is stationary and it is part of my 192.168 network also stationary my lan stationary switch stationary firewall stationary why because this whole is a part of abc.com headquarter now can you change your headquarter every now and then can you do this absolutely not right so your headquarter is this let's say this guy is uh, or this side is your branch okay again stationary everything is stationary right so if you come on a daily basis access your laptop and then access whatever resource that you want either on the abc.com headquarters or on a branch location if you do this on a daily basis you still you also need a vpn why because you are going through the going through the isp right if you are going through the isp okay there is a chance that anybody over here can look into your information right there can be an attacker so if that's the case what you need to do is you need to create a vpn technology a vpn tunnel that will be between this firewall and this firewall so what will happen is see anything behind this firewall is anyway private yes right and anything over here is also private yeah so the only thing which is public is your uh, firewalls outside interface or wan interface that is the only thing which is outside okay so what you do is you do know that um, whatever is inside the firewall is all secure i don't need to worry about that what i really do need to worry is the information or the uh, you know when the information leaves the firewall from the wan interface now everything is not secure because it is going through the isp anything which goes through the isp can be you know intercepted or uh, you know intercepted by anybody else and can look into that data and try to figure out that what information it can extract from it so the only place where it is not secure is on the wan interface of the fortigate firewall or the any firewall for that matter so what you do is you create a vpn over here so that whatever traffic which comes over here goes safely and securely through the vpn without anybody over here trying to check and understand what is it that you are trying to access or what information or what data is it that you are trying to access
access okay now before i move ahead is this much clear you call this ip sec vpn okay that's the use case and the u name of it is called as ip sec everybody clear yes or no type in the chat box please okay so we understood the concept we understood the use case right and now let's look into the types so site to site and remote access right we just saw the ipsec vpn that is why it is called as site to site because you are uh, running the vpn on one side which is the headquarters and to a different site which is the branch so basically vpn you have vpn but between two locations two two stationary locations right that is why you call that as site to site then you have a remote access okay we, which we discussed next is the composition so when i say composition what i mean is that the vpn that we have on, on, what are the what are those ingredients on which that particular vpn is made of okay let's look over here let me zoom this a little bit okay see there are there are a couple of protocols i want you i, I want you guys to write this down please okay write this down because you won't find this information anywhere any articles okay and even if you find those articles that will you have to go through swamp through i don't know maybe 10 or 15 articles just to get what i'm trying to tell you over here okay so see one protocol so these are uh, there is something which is called as ike1 okay so ike is basically called as internet key exchange and it is exactly what it does as the name goes it is a key exchange mechanism on the internet clear so when you say ike what you are trying to say is you are trying to use a mechanism or a method to exchange keys on the internet okay so that's what the ike stands for now remember the last time when we have gone through something which is called as symmetric asymmetric right so that is what is um, you know uh, that is what the keys infrastructure and how the keys are exchanged this is what we have already learned right so the internet key exchange is basically a method or a mechanism how to you know negotiate the keys on the internet on the public side now to make use of that you have three protocols you know ike is called as a protocol suite do you know why it is called as a protocol suite because it is not just one protocol that it uses it uses multiple protocols okay and that's why it is called as protocol suite because it uses something which is called as skimi okle and isacm you must have heard about isacm somewhere okay but skimi and okle not so much okay so ike is a protocol suite it works on the basis of three protocols which is called as kimi okle and isacamp now let's understand what is it look over here provides a mechanism for using public key encryption for authentication purposes okay so provides a mechanism for using public key encryption now remember when i was talking in the last sessions about symmetric and asymmetric you remember that okay so basically this is your asymmetric method skimi is a framework or a method Uh, which is asymmetric in nature which will allow the vpn to negotiate keys asymmetrically now you remember what is asymmetrically you have something which is called as public key and then you have private key now quickly tell me before i finish what is public and private key 
why you use public key why you use private key okay quickly type in the chat box why do we need private key and why do we need public key remember the the session that i took on cryptography hmm good getting few answers public is for encryption private is for decryption clear yeah? all of you yes or no so private key is always used for decryption in most of the cases and public key is used for encryption okay because once any information which is encrypted by the public key can only be decrypted by the help of private key and who has the private key just one single person who is the owner right is it clear or not yes or no okay now skimmy as i said again that it's a mechanism for using the public key so skimmy protocol or skimmy protocol is basically using a method which is asymmetric in nature for to exchange keys public key private key clear all of you yes or no Now we have Okle. It says provides a mode-based mechanism for arriving at an encryption key. Okay. Now again, this process. See, Skimmy is more about exchanging keys. I'm going very deep in into the VPN. So if it if it is a, at any given point of time you are thinking that this is going way above your head do let me know in the chat box okay so skimmy is for exchanging the keys okle is giving arriving at the key. arriving at the symmetric key okay so exchanging keys Skimmy, Oakley is arriving at a symmetric key. Okay, now this symmetric key is not shared. Okay, let's say you have a, you have one guy over here who is initiating that traffic, and one guy who is responding to the traffic. Okay, so you'll have an asymmetric key over here. You will have an asymmetric key over here. It will be derived, but this will not be shared. What will be shared? Public key. public key will be shared to arrive at the asymmetric key and this asymmetric key will not be shared clear all of you yes or no now we have something which is called as the i second which we have heard a lot of times now let's understand what this basically means the seed says define the architecture for message exchange including packet format and state transitions between the two ipsec peer what this basically mean is that see when you have to send a letter what you do do you send a letter just like that or you put this letter in an envelope you put the letter in an envelope right then you put from uh, blah 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 and to blah 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 okay or i should say i mean sorry <laughs> to and from right that's how you write a letter right remember class 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 times we used to write letters to friends or family or somewhere yeah so this is how it exactly works that whenever you are using the vpn okay what happen is that it is basically trying to send the traffic from one location to the other okay and to send that information it has to be in a 
header format now when i say header format what i mean is see do you know tcp header right you have the source port you have the destination port blah 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 okay if you look into the ip header you know there is a source ip there is a destination ip and other features right so every header has its format same same manner you have isaac m and it has its own header and it has its own features right so you know the it will be somewhere like um isaac m message one or two or four or whatever it is okay then what is the value of that okay so too many features i do not want to get into the header section but what i mean is that you have you are basically using the isaac m header to use to arrive at a symmetric key by exchanging the asymmetric keys okay so that's what is happening with these three protocols Kimi is basically responsible for asymmetric in uh, you know exchanging of the keys. Oakley is responsible for arriving at the symmetric key on both the sides, and Isaac Kemp is basically um, allowing you to share that information from one location to the other location with the help of Isaac Kemp headers. Is this much clear, all of you? Type in yes or no in the chat box. Quickly. Any questions? Any doubts? Anything that you want to talk about over here? good good if you if you guys are saying yes that basically means i'm whatever i'm telling you guys are able to understand you are able to follow okay great now let's look over here let's look into the working behavior so what we have discussed right now is more like you know uh, what is the concept okay what are what is the technology behind it what are the parts of the technology which works behind the vpn okay so we have seen all that now let's look into the working behavior as to when when we say that it is working how exactly it is working okay now see whenever we are working with the vpn okay we have something which is called as the phase 1 and then we have something which is called as the phase 2 okay now we'll we'll come into the phase 1 and phase 2 a little later i'll tell you why because vpn's phase 1 and phase 2 is basically a part of ipsec okay so we'll come into that what i wanted to show you till over here is that when it comes to ike when it comes to the vpn when it comes to the uh, isa uh, ipsec as a whole you should know that what is the concept behind this okay now what we are going to do is we are going to look for something which is called as the ssl vpn okay we are, we are just taking the concepts as of now just the concepts okay what exactly the v ssl vpn is how does it work and we have already gone through the ipsec uh hold on okay so let's have a look into what is the ssl vpn okay now see uh, whenever we are talking about anything any topic any technology we have to first of all understand that whatever what am i going to get out of it okay what is it that i am going to get out of whatever is it that i'm learning right so by the end of this topic that we have you'll be able to understand the vpn technologies okay which is available as a as a technology and then what you can do on the fortigate firewall then how would you go ahead and configure those technologies for example the ssl vpn or the ipsec vpn okay then 
how does the SSL VPN work with respect to the users? Okay, then how do you configure something which is called as a SSL VPN portal? And then the firewall policy. Okay, see this is just a you know a small diagram as to you know tell you that when we are talking about VPN, what does it basically mean? Okay, see whenever we are talking about VPN, okay, we have to understand virtual private network uses the public uh, segments of public network to provide access to another private network right so if you look over here what you can see is that you have a corporate network you have a branch office right and you can access all of them through a device which is mentioned over here or a 40 gate firewall right so it basically provides you the confidentiality right confidentiality because it is you know making sure that the data remains secure and it is also providing you with the integrity right because it will make sure that your data is not tampered okay so this is what normally a vpn needs to provide okay now one what happens is when the data basically goes from one location to the other location through the firewall okay if you do not have any vpn setup what will happen is it will go unencrypted okay and when i say unencrypted what basically means is that this information if it is possible okay can be viewed by anybody on the internet right so what we have to understand is that you have to make sure that um, whenever you are uh, you know um, sending them some data from one location to the other location it should be uh, encrypted so that nobody on the internet should be able to understand what is it that you are trying to access okay so once you create this vpn you will be able to access anything on your corporate as uh, corporate office and nobody would be able to understand on the internet side and what exactly it is that you're trying to access okay so basically as i said it uses the public network to provide access to the private segment uh, creates a secure tunnel to protect data transferred between the offices so that's what we are basically talking about as a vpn as a concept okay now uh, when we are talking about 40 gate vpn all right we have to i have to basically change the font i think it's quite dark anyways so 40 gate vpn basically provides you uh, you know ssl vpn and and the ipsec vpn okay so we are going to talk about what exactly those things are okay now whenever we are saying ssl vpn okay we are targeting only layer 7 see what does it say it's that typically used to secure web transactions okay web transactions and we know that whenever we are talking about web what is it that we are talking about we are talking about the browser right so if you are trying to access something from the browser and you still need a vpn technology that can help you safeguard your data you need something which is called as ssl vpn okay all right https link created yes and then client signs on through the secure web page so you'll get a portal page and then you'll have to um, you know put in your username and password then you will be able to access okay now ipsec is more like you know um, um, uh, it, it, this is basically for your uh, uh, you know it's like if you want to access my you know remote desktop or maybe a file server or some network level applications then an ipsec vpn is a much better choice okay this is a much better choice over there well suited for network um, based legacy application secure tunnel okay ipsec vpn can be configured between 40 gate unit and most third party ipsec vpn clients so uh, vpn clients is basically now so the, gone are the days where you have to make sure that both the sides or if you are creating a vpn you have to make sure that everywhere has to be the same device otherwise it will not work gone are the days now every vendor can support any other vendor okay okay now we will talk about something which is the ssl vpn right now the ssl vpn ssl vpn basically makes sure that whenever you are trying to access you know the the web mode okay you have to make sure that guys one second
Okay. All right, sorry. Sorry for that. Okay. So, what you have to understand when whenever we are talking about SSL VPN is that it's more like a layer seven functionality. You have to use your your web browser when it comes to the SSL VPN. Okay. Now, um, we are in a we are we are in a place where you can use a software as well. But I do not want to confuse you more. So as of now, just think that if you are using an SSL VPN, you need to use a web browser. Okay. But if in an interview somebody asks you, you can say that SSL VPN can work with the um, browser and can also work with the software. Okay. Especially with the FortiGate firewall. Okay. So SSL VPN, as the name suggests, right? You are basically trying to, you know, uh, get your uh, traffic encrypted from the SSL side. Now SSL works on layer 7 right so when it is working on layer 7 okay you have to use a browser okay now what happens is that uh, whenever you are using an SSL VPN with the web only mode uh, let me clear this off So whenever you are using connections of remote user to SSL VPN, you need to use the HTTPS website. Okay. What happens is that the traffic reaches the firewall. Okay. And once the traffic reaches the firewall, it has to, it has, it will present a page for accessing. The tunnel gets created. Once the tunnel gets created, then finally you will be able to access the resource. So you have to authenticate yourself first. Okay, you'll be put, you'll, you have to give your username, you have to give your password and then if it is the right username and password, then you would be able to access that. Okay, that's what it matters. Now once the authentication is done, you will get a portal page. Okay, that portal page is more about what you can have, what, what access you can have, what kind of resources you have, what bookmarks you have. We are going to you know, show you all this in the, in the uh, labs. Okay, so once this is done, you would be able to access your resources. You can create bookmarks as well. Okay, that's what the SSL VPN is all about. Now you have one more feature which is called as SSL VPN tunnel mode. Now the tunnel mode, see, a secure SSL connection is established with the FortiGate unit first of all. But in this in this method or in the tunnel mode, what happens is you have to download a client. Okay. So you have to download a software client and SSL VPN client and then you have to use that SSL VPN client to access the resources. Okay, so this is the difference between the web mode and the tunnel mode. Okay, in the web mode you have to use a browser, in the tunnel mode you do not have to use a browser, you can use the software. Okay, that's what the difference is. Okay, it's exactly the same, just put in all the information in the software itself and it will be able to create the tunnel. Once the tunnel is created, it, you will authenticate. Once the authentication is done, you would be able to access your resources just like what you have done in the web mode. Okay. So, so let's say you have user groups, all right? We have Paris, we have Chicago, we have London, okay? And we have so many users on every location, okay? So what will happen is that um, these user groups will basically provide access to the firewall policies that require the SSL VPN. Okay, so what will happen is that the you, you can have multiple firewall policies uh, with respect to the SSL VPN, and every firewall policy, and depending on what 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 uh, uh, user you have called, the VPN will work accordingly. Whatever resources that uh, that particular user can access. Okay. Now, as I said, that 40 um, 40 um, gate firewall has the SSL VPN, right? Now this SSL VPN, uh, just to give you, yeah. So this SSL VPN works in two modes. One is web mode and one is tunnel mode, right? So the 40 client is a software that you run on the soft, uh, on your end user machine. So you can use your IPsec, you can use your SSL VPN, you can use your tunnel mode, you can use your uh, side to side mode. So basically that software is um, that software can support every VPN tunnel that you can think of. Okay, that tunnel, that VPN, that 40 client software would help you create 
either the SSN VPL tunnel mode, it can also help you create the, um, the IPsec mode as well. So your 40 client is a software that basically helps you with this, um, uh, you know, uh, VPN creation. Right. So when I when you talk about the authentication, right, the authentication has to be done with the firewall. Okay. Now you can use an AD server or an LDAP server or a radius server or a TACAC server, whatever it is. You you can use that, but the authentication prompt has to come to your Fortigate firewall. Okay. So you have to use your username and password, which is one factor. Then you can integrate that with maybe a two factor or a multi factor, which is you know a 40 token, maybe email maybe an OTP okay you can use those features as well and you can have multi-factor authentication integrated okay now what you can do is that uh, when you have um, you know a VPN configured for different locations I want that or the client wants that if anybody is coming from Chicago he should have a Chicago uh, landscape behind and then he should be able to access if somebody is coming from Paris he should have an Eiffel Tower uh, behind on the web page and then he should be able to access if somebody is coming from the London he should have a London um, you know uh, bridge and then he should be able to access one my point is every portal you can customize every portal to look uh, so that the look and feel is more personalized okay so that's what the portal is all about see so once you give the web access right you can have different functionalities different features on every portal Okay, according to whatever location that those guys are coming, you can have different portals all together. Okay, so once you, I mean SSL VPN, right? We all know that SSL VPN goes through the client handshake and the, um, you know, like an SSL handshake which requires the client hello, server hello. Okay, so Fortigate basically uses the self signing certificate by default, but every company out there, they they have their own certificate which is uploaded to the Fortigate. So what you do is you also upload the um, your company's Fortigate, uh, sorry, your company's certificate on the Fortigate firewall. Okay, so that whenever the Fortigate is trying to make an SSL handshake, it always presents the um, you know the certificate which is your company. Because if it uses a self-signed, you know, if it is using a self-signed, then it is first of all it's a security issue. Second, you'll also get a prompt that you are going to access a, a website which is not secure, right? And uh, it, it uses the SSL certificate for authentication. Okay, because end of the day, look at what we are trying to uh, achieve over here. We are trying to achieve the SSL VPN, right? SSL VPN means that you are using the SSL technology or SSL protocol. So it does work on the SSL and it uses the SSL certificate. Now the question comes up as to what certificate it is going to use. It is going to use the FortiGate's default self-signed certificate. You can always go ahead and uh, you know make sure that you upload your um, company certificate so that the self-signed certificate is not used. Is it clear, all of you? Yeah. So this is the place. You you go into the SSL VPN settings and you'll get a drop down where it will ask you that do you want to present a self-signed certificate or do you want to present a different certificate? Okay, now use certificates issued by the trusted certificate. Yeah, that's what we are talking about. Encryption key. So SSL, you should always use the high one, which is your TLS, transport layer security. Transport layer security is an improved version of SSL. Okay, we still will still say SSL VPN, but what we mean is TLS VPN. Okay, the default setting is RC4, which is 128. Um, which is um, in evaluation licensing, okay. Uh, but depending on what kind of uh, FortiGate hardware you have, you would always have AES, okay. It is set to high, there's still VPN connections with clients that cannot meet with the standard will fail, yeah. So always keep on high, never make changes over here so that you are always making sure that your connection is always secure. That this is more like a, the steps that you need to do before so that you can create an SSL. Okay, so this is what I'll I'll just pause and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, give me one second, guys.
I'm just uh, powering on my system, um, the VMware and the EVNG, just one second. Okay, so let it run, let it boot power up and then we'll log in and I'll show you what, what all features and functionalities that you have with the VPN. Okay, so let's log in. Oh, okay, hold on. All right, so uh, get system status, grep port one. Oh, what happened? Hmm. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Wrong command. Interface. Yeah. So we have one hundred two sixty one seventy one. Copy and config system interface, edit port 1, set allow access, HTTP, HTTPS, ping, and SSH, sorry, ping and SSH. Show done and and there you go, good. So admin, e password, yeah, save it up. And yeah, I did, I have to do a wipe because it was expired so 48 north and uh, there you go okay so we'll come into the vpn section all right now over here Do you see this SSL VPN portal and then you have something which is called as SSL VPN settings, okay. Now one by one we are going to go through this, okay. Um, just one second guys. Let me change this. I do not like this coloring. Uh, okay, so we'll go into the VPN okay SSL VPN settings okay now in the SSL VPN settings the first thing do you see over here it says connection settings listen on the interface okay so we do know that um, we have to first of all configure to understand that on which interface I should be accessing it okay so you can what you do is you know that you have either port 3 or you have port 1 okay so now if you are on the outside let's say you're on the outside or on the isp right so i have to go through the sl vpn so you'll use port one right so let's do that let's use port one clear all of you just give me a yes or no whenever if you're not able to understand okay 
so i'll use port 1 so that my ssl will ssl vpn will become active on port 1 okay now if you if you say port 443 which is not wrong which is which is perfectly fine but what will happen is that the port will conflict with the administrative HTTPS port okay so if you are also accessing port 1 with the IP address and on HTTPS this will conflict right so either either you change the port or you change the uh, you know um, protocol so what I will do is over here I'll just you know use triple four three what will happen is it says web mode access will be listening at HTTPS 192.168.171.129 triple four three rather than four four three okay so you always have to do this just make sure you do this okay then redirect http to ssl vpn so if in case somebody access the you know vpn with the http and you want that it should get redirected automatically use this option now restrict access uh, allow access from any host or limit access to specific host see this is just like trusted host in the in the in the administrator page you remember initially when you we, when you were starting off so trusted host is like um, if you mention an ip address ssl vpn will only be be available uh, if somebody is coming from that particular source ip okay if you say allow access from any host user can come from any particular location india china europe you know whatever it is i mean if you're limiting it whatever public ip that you mentioned it has to come from there okay so it's like a trusted host so as of now i'll just keep access okay now um inactive for three minutes seconds it's time out all right so certificate now see this is what i was talking about so you in your case you will always have your company's certificate use that in our case we'll use the self-signed now uh, this is tunnel mode for now we will just uh, ignore this part okay now the rest is um, same it says authentication portal so see this over here the portal this means that what kind of access you want what kind of uh, resources the user will get so if you enable this it says all other user groups portal and then you as of now i have full access now this is the default one now guys uh, with the evaluation license you cannot create more than one portal so you have to use the full access only okay but you can uh, I'll, I'll show you what full access is all about so you use this select this none yeah click on apply see what does it say no ssl vpn policies exist click here to create a new SSL VPN policy okay so the first thing is once you create or once you have you know configured your SSL VPN settings second is that you have to create an SSL VPN policy because without the policy no firewall will do the job okay so I'll say SSL VPN policy now see in the incoming interface rather than selecting port 1 it is saying SSL VPN interface now do you know why this is of course because I want the traffic to hit the VPN interface not on port 1 okay I mean port you, you can always use port 1 for all the other kind of traffic but if it is an SSL VPN traffic and if it is port 4443 then always use the SSL VPN port okay outgoing in our case I will basically use the port 3 because I will be accessing maybe user PC2 or a sales PC or whatever it is okay basically 172 16 network is that what you are going to access okay. yeah so I'm going to access the 172 network so I'll say uh, outgoing is port 3 all right now source um, over here you can always mention whatever source the traffic will be coming from okay for now I'm just keeping it at all now say it says one user or a group is required see it, the firewall knows that you are creating a VPN policy and for the VPN to work you need to have an authentication in place okay because if you don't have authentication how will the firewall know hey, are you a legitimate user or not right so you need to go into the user section and use whatever users that you have okay you can have an ad server and an ldap server you can use that or you can use your local server you users as well 
so I'll, I'll use the local now what I'll do is rather than selecting the guest user single user I'll select the group guest group okay but I, why because I'll be creating a user okay so that's why so I'll, I'll check this and select the guest group guys are you able to follow me if in case you're not do let me know okay guest group or all the destination for now I'll keep it as all but in, in, in our case it will be 172 16 network okay you know what let's create hold on shouldn't take more time we'll copy paste okay and there we go done I'll select this up destination done service I'll just say you know all ICMP I do not want anything else okay so all ICMP and then accept uh, if you want to do that go ahead and do it if not uncheck okay so I'll, I'll keep this on and in all, all sessions okay All right, so see it again came back to the same SSL VPN page. Okay, it is now not giving me that policy problem. So I'll apply. There you go, setting set. Okay, now I'll go into the user section. Or hold on, let me show you one thing more. Is this clear? SSL VPN, SSL VPN setting. Is this clear? Yes or no in the chat box? I'll show you the portal. You remember in this particular section, the SSL VPN settings, I use the portal full access, right? So let me show you what the full access is. Now see, I cannot create new because what will happen is if even if I just say test and uh, let's see. Okay. See maximum number of entries has been reached okay that's what i wanted to show you guys that with the v, uh, evaluation license you can just have one ssl vpn portal okay so let me show you the one which we have which is full access so click on edit okay so once you click on edit right so it will have the tunnel mode okay inside the tunnel mode you have the split tunneling okay so if you are using tunnel mode what i mean is when you are saying tunnel mode what you mean is you are using a client you are using a 40 client you are using a software right so you can have split tunneling split tunneling basically means see if it is disabled if it is disabled there is no split tunneling split tunneling basically means that all your traffic will go through the vpn regardless of whether it is your personal traffic whether it is your private traffic or whether it is a company traffic so if you're trying to access some company's resource it will anyway go through the vpn if you are trying to just you, you do a youtube or a facebook which is your own private uh, time that will still go through the vpn if connected so disabled means no split tunneling only all the traffic once connected will go through the tunnel then you have enabled based on the policy destination this basically means that whatever policy that you have whatever policy that you have configured okay on the basis of that whatever destination that you have mentioned on the basis of that only that particular traffic will work remember in the ssl vpn policy what destination have i called 172.16 network right so what will happen is only 172.16 network will go through the vpn tunnel if i am going for facebook or youtube or instagram that will not go through the vpn it will use my own uh, internet adapter. okay this is the address as in what address that you will get if you are using the tunnel mode what address that you will get is mentioned over here this is the default one you can always change this up okay you can edit this and change it but i'm not changing anything as of now because again this is for tunnel mode you do not need to worry about this as of now now see over here you can um, give you the bookmarks and all i'll show you this in just um, in some time because once i show you once, let me show you the portal then this information will make sense to you okay so for now just click on okay and i'll go into the user section i'll go into the user definition i'll create a new user local user 
and let's say I am using let me see four okay and okay and you see four and password done and no two factor authentication enabled user group yes big make it a part of the guest group yeah remember we have we have used the guest group in the forever policy so that's why click on submit done so your nc4 is created okay this much is done let me show you how the portal will look like okay so 129 And connection is reset. Do you know why this is happening? Because my, uh, I mean the the, it's an evaluation license, right? So it does not allow weak um, cipher suits. Okay, that's why. So I have to make certain changes in the browser. Give me one second. Let me see how to how to lower the. Suits in Firefox. So you go into About Config, okay? Except uh, that's fine. SSL. Something like that, right? You go into the SSL about config. Yep. Search for SSL three using the search field. Okay, so let me try this up. SSL three. Oh wow, that's a lot. Or TLS. What I do know is that if you go into the TLS. And then SSL TNS version minimum. Yeah, so the minimum version I'll make this as zero. Okay, done. And uh, let's try. Okay, let's try. No, okay. So I'll try one thing more version max one. Okay, one thing let me do this as well so config system global set cell SSL yeah there you go set SSL minimum protocol version okay in three Okay, let's try this up. SSL and no cipher overlap. Okay, so basically this means that there is no common uh, common SSL version that it is trying to take. Security TLS version maximum one. TLS version minimum is zero.
security SSL, okay. X or uh, 128, root 56, okay. Um, security dot SSL, sorry, okay. Make this true and this guy as well. Mm. Um, okay, let me try on the another browser. Yeah, see, this is the problem. S error SSL version mismatch. Okay, let me just quickly check a couple of things. Hold on. All right. So, guys, uh, after a couple of uh, troubleshooting, we figured out how to get this page. This is a SSL VPN login page. All right. What we had to do was that over here, do you see this, the SSL, uh, the security TLS version minimum? This is one, maximum is four, okay? And the fallback limit is four. So it can go fallback to uh, the, these, these many, okay? Now, apart from this, what I've done is I went inside a setting which is called as config VPN SSL setting, all right? And over here, I've mentioned that the maximum protocol version that you can use okay is 1.0 that's it i mean you cannot go above 1.2 or 1.3 because the evaluation license will not allow it okay and what will happen is that you will not you will not be able to make a connection so that's why i have said always use the lower lowest version which is 1.0 that's it okay once you do this it will give you a warning you know that uh, you're using the factory default and for better security use a signed certificate ignore that but just once you once you you know do this and uh, you know log into 192 168 129 with 443 or whatever ip that you guys have okay you will be able to log in now over here you have to and you know mention nsc4 which was the username which we created and the password password is password okay and then log in there you go see so the portal is up running for you so this is called as web mode okay your web mode is working you are getting access to your ssl vpn portal page now here you can either launch the 40 client meaning you can if you have a software client on your system you can use the 40 client or you can download the 40 client if you want to okay if you do this for windows let me see if it works or not i don't know because it needs to have access to the internet. Uh, anyways, so you'll get a something which is called as quick connection. Click on this. So you can go into the HTTP, HTTPS websites, whatever the URL that you mention. Okay, if it is allowed, and it, if your SSL VPN policy is allowing that, it you will be able to access. Let me show you what I'm what I mean. See, in our case, the policy which we have, okay, this policy is from outside to the inside. Now remember, look, look over here. You see this SSL VPN policy? Yeah. It says SSL route to port 3. So traffic is going, coming from the outside. Sorry. Coming from the outside, which is port 1 to the inside. So it will be coming into one of these, you know, uh, PCs. So I do not have access to the internet. But what I do have is access to the resource 172.16 network. Right. That is all I can do. So what I'll do is, I cannot use the URL and all that stuff, but what I can do is I can do ping. Okay, so I'll say, uh, you know, hold on. So let me, which machine is on? This one. Okay, let's in this link. Oh, it's a Windows machine. Okay. Hold on. Stop. Start.
okay so let me give this ip of 172 what ip it is 5 okay 172 16 32.5 172 16 32.1 okay done so let me quickly ping to confirm whether i have access or not 172 16 32.1 okay and not let me check switch okay switch was not powered on please make sure you do this because um, you know it's always a problem make sure your switch is up and running okay so copy oh copy the running configuration startup startup configuration you always do this so this prompt that you see you will not get this prompt let me try this again there you go right so we are able to ping from the vpc to my gateway that's good so we have the connectivity now let's come back to the vpn ssl vpn now let's put it over here as 172.16.32.5 now if it is working it will work it will if it is not not there you go 172.16.32.5 is reachable okay does it make sense to all of you yes are you able to follow me are you able to understand that how the traffic is coming to the VPN portal and how the traffic is going through the VPN to your FortiGate firewall? Are you able to understand all this? Great. You can do the same with the Telnet. You can do the same with the SSH. You can take an RDP as well. You can take a VNC as well. Okay. You can do all this. What you do is, in a, in my case, I've taken a user PC. You do you you take a Windows PC and do this. <coughs> take an RDP or take a VNC and see if it is working out for you okay so this is quick connection all right you have one thing which is called as a bookmark now bookmark is also the same thing okay uh, let me do one thing let me tell it an ssh rdb and cftp it doesn't have ping so i'll not be able to do it <coughs> So anyways, let me tell you. So what this means is, let's let's say I have Google.com. Okay, I want to access Google.com, or let's say um, um, ABC file server. Okay, and I say ABC.com forward slash file forward slash main dot txt. Let's say this is my file which I want to access. Okay. Um, my um, work progress okay so I have this one I'll save this up now do you see this you have a bookmark okay and then it says ABC file server okay what this basically means is that it is as soon as you click on click on this okay it says SLV pin proxy error why because of course I don't have any such thing right so that is why the access is denied but but this, what will it will do is it will create a book it will basically create a connection that it will that is you know going to that particular website okay so you can also do this with the help of bookmarks now do you see you see this it's logged in from the six minutes and uh, as of now there's no in and out okay because i'm just playing around with the portal itself right so you can use the quick connection you can use the bookmark and the history section do you see this it's all zeros that you do not see anything over here the reason is that it's the first time i have actually you know logged in if i log out let me show you log out okay now once i log in back again it will show me in the history section okay so launch done now do you see this the history section do you see this it is giving me the you know the date and the time and the you know the second values which um, you know till till for which I was logged on. Okay. Now you can see the same information over here as well. Okay. How do you see this? You basically go into dashboard. Okay. Under dashboard, you see this add monitor. You go into that 
you search for VPN okay for TV VPN and then you have IPsec and SSL so click on the SSL part click on add monitor okay so now again going to the dashboard and do you see this you have the SSL VPN click on this and there you go so we have one active user right connection mode is web because I'm using the web browser if I if I've been using the footy client software it would have been using shown me tunnel mode right so look over here it says username as nc4 two factor is not enabled that's fine uh, IP address do you see this 192.168.171.1 .1. okay do you know who this guy is this is my gateway and look at the duration 53 seconds that's okay whatever duration is you'll be able to see that and web connection so if there is any web connections you will be able to see that as well do you know why is it showing web one web connection um see because i have created this bookmark right that's why okay is this clear all of you yes or no now let me show you uh, in the vpn page the portal page okay scroll down do you see this the web mode and it says neutrino so i can change this to you know whatever i want i mean the look and feel i can change that I can change the session information if you want to see it. So if I remove this, you will not be able to see the session information. Connection launcher. I mean, you, if you want to use the 40 client or not. Login history. I was able to see that, right? Look here. This history. You can enable or disable over here as well. Bookmarks. User bookmarks. Meaning my own personal custom bookmark. Do you want that or not? Meaning a user should it be able to create a bookmark or not? I have this plus new bookmark right so I can create if I'll disable I won't be able to do it now see if I click on save changes okay see as of now I'm logged in right I'll refresh okay and there you go see done all all moved up everything gone okay because it's instantly you know takes into account everything or whatever changes has been done so now I do not have anything anything I cannot do really anything I, I can log into the web mode but I don't have any information okay so and you see this the even the the it was coming up a little different so and you see four password again I log in this time and see the difference do you see this the look and feel is a little bit different because I changed the um, you know the uh, the theme and apart from SSL VPN portal of launching the 40 client, I do not get that bookmark section. I do not get that quick connection. I do not get the history section. I do not even check whether the data is coming in and out, right? Nothing at all. Okay. That's what basically means if you play around with the SSL VPN portal. Okay. Clear all of you? Yes or no? Okay. So now uh, let's do one thing. Let's, uh, you know, I'll take a pause and uh, let's uh, let's um, you know let's take the questions and see if uh, we have all these questions answered give me one second okay and we have there you go Okay, so we are going to start off over here. I want to show you something real quick. Hold on. Guys, do you see this? We have 171 questions till now. Great. Awesome. All of you. Leading is Mr. Nilesh with 19 questions. Uh, just right behind him is Kripa Sindhu with 18 questions. Okay. And we have uh, Srikanth at the third place with 15 questions. Okay. So these are the top three people who have asked the most number of questions. And I, you know what? And these are the guys who are actually, you know, pinging me also that you know they are having this problem and that problem so uh, really kudos to you know all of you that you are you know asking a lot of questions and uh, you you make sure that you understand what the topic is all about 
so great so let's understand and let's look over here from the one is can we create vpn tunnel between router and a firewall absolutely you can Nilesh. so you can uh, once we you know head into the uh, the ip side vpn part right so i'll show you how to create the vpn between the 248 firewall but you can also do this with a cisco asa if you have and if you know how to configure a cisco asa with the vpn you can absolutely do so basically as i said in the initial when i was explaining this right um, in the theory section it's all now now it's there is no um, uh, uh, you know everything is vendor neutral basically what i mean is it doesn't matter if you have a router or a firewall if it supports vpn you can make it you can even create a vpn between a windows system and your hotel firewall you can do that as well okay uh, firewall detects okay but uh, i have never uh, created like cisco sh is also a firewall right but yeah i have never created any vpn tunnel between uh, firewall and router i have created gre tunnel between router to router but not uh -huh. uh, router to firewall ip sec tunnel see if your router supports the side to side vpn okay you can create the vpn between your foot, uh, your firewall and a router as well it is no. just that the device needs to support the vpn that's it okay okay firstly we need to check the compatibility then yeah uh, okay. is this just does it support or not if it supports you can create no problem at all okay got it okay prepa sindhu says that um, firewall detects the packets belong to a specific ip sec vpn tunnel by checking the isa camp header absolutely yes see from the tcp header the firewall knows what is the source port what is the destination port right in the same manner from the isa camp header it checks and understands that whether the traffic is to for a VP, ipsec vpn or to which source ip which destination ip which port okay all these informations are in the isa camp header please go through the isa camp header once okay you'll you'll know what exactly what i mean is okay sir yeah and tomorrow we'll be going through the main mode you know the six messages so anyway it will be clear okay next is how it uses the ssl certificate to create the tunnel see it's like just like a normal ssl handshake as soon as the traffic reaches the fortigate firewall uh, so for example for me it was on 4443 port right so it will create the ssl handshake but in our case it was not the it was the problem because evaluation license right self signed certificate it won't create the ssl handshake correctly but in your licensed version firewalls if you have a certificate registered certificate as soon as the traffic comes reaches your firewall okay it will see the client hello it will generate the server hello it will follow the whole ssl handshake process it will create the ssl tunnel and then move on to the authentication part clear okay yeah i got okay. does it use ssl certificate for authentication if not then what is i think we answered this question right what are the phases used to start what are the phases used to serve the vpn and what is the same we'll we'll talk about this tomorrow in the ipsec vpn part remember i stopped in the vpn yeah yeah this like yeah, this one we'll we'll check this tomorrow okay so next is vpn ssl policy source will always all or how the no 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 it's just like a normal policy you can mention the source so see in my case i was coming with 192.168 so i can you can mention in the source 192.168 as the source and destination 172.16 and in the <laughs> service you can say ping or http or ftp whatever it is okay but maybe i, I got confused uh, if this is ssl okay yeah. how i can restrict means uh, everybody will have different ips no for the home yeah but so it always all no matter yes. what ip they are coming so see from the ip see ssl vpn is like for a user who is on a remote location right he is he is in a cafe or maybe whatever uh, branch location so whenever he is coming he'll be anyway will be coming with a public ip right yes. so what you can do is so what we do in our case uh, we we do not say all we say 164.100. dot something which is an ip which is given to india public ip so what we do is if anybody wants to access ssl vpn he has to be in indian location so it is 16400 doesn't matter if it is 16400.1.1 1 
How to secure that only the sec second question also there for the NAT. How to secure that company machine having 40 clients will connect to the how to the, the second second last question. Oh okay, okay. In a VPN SSL config source to destination, we need to do always NAT mode. If we disable, how will it work? NAT mode is again, see, in my case I had to do this because we are in a evaluation, sorry, in the in the lab environment, right? So what you can do is from your um, in your section if you disable NAT it will still work why because your source will always be a public IP yes but right? I didn't understand this this concept means when we will use NAT and when we will not use because it will come with public IP and if you want to use the internal uh, resource it will always be NAT no see what I mean is that let's say I am I mean this is ISP right okay so let's say uh, I am over here all right and I am I'm sitting on a cafe I have an IP of 164.100.1.1 okay I came over here over here and logged in with the VPN tunnel my tunnel is up okay now if I'm accessing ITPC or whatever it is when the traffic reaches over here what will be the source IP See if you are if you are not having NAT, if your NAT is disabled, the source IP will be 164.100.1.1. Is it right or not? Are you able to follow? Yeah. Yes. If this is the source and your destination will be will be this guy, right? So when the response from the sales PC will go, the destination will become this guy, and this will become the source. So your all your internal PC, the default gateway is your 40 gate firewall. So the traffic will anyway reaches the 40 gate firewall, and then the 40 gate firewall will forward the traffic over here. Okay. So if your NAT is not enabled, it is absolutely fine. Okay. It is just that in our case we have to enable the NAT. But you can you can you can remove that also if you want. Rakshi sir. Yeah, uh, actually, when, when you are confused, okay, I'll show you. Hold on, I'll disable this, okay? No, not. a couple of things more I have to enable the um, quick access and all that okay so there you go so we have done a quick connection and uh, Thing. that was the IP launch reachable okay now do you know what has happened okay so let me show you let's take a capture again reachable okay see the traffic is um, port 3 port 3 out why is it showing me just this okay anyways see the traffic is coming out from the port 3 with the IP of 32.1 to 32.5 now this is wrong hold on this is wrong
it is only showing me port 3 why then also for packet any um chalo let me try one thing more no um filter is correct Okay, this is wrong. Do not follow this because it should not be this. Like, so now, anyways, I'll tell you what actually happens. See, when if you are over here, okay, or let's let's just say you are this guy. Okay, when you are creating a connection, first thing is the VPN tunnel is created. Once the VPN tunnel gets created, then you get access to these resources. Is this is this much clear? Yes. Okay. Now, when you are trying to access something, your source IP and destination IP. Your destination IP is 32.5. Okay. Your source IP. Let me show you. Um, in the browser, if you go into dashboard, this is a loop in water. IP 192.168.171.1. Now, what is this IP? This is the IP address of my system. Okay. So, what will happen is you are having 192.168.171.1 source IP. Destination IP is 32.5. Clear? Now, when you are sending this traffic to this guy, okay, the traffic comes over here and this guy replies you back. Okay, the destination IP will be 192.168.171.1. Okay, and the source IP will remain the same. Okay, now tell me one thing how does user PC2 knows how to route the traffic to this guy? You have a gateway, right? Yeah. And who's your gateway? 32.1. Yeah. Who's 32.1? Where are you getting confused? Okay, but so I understand that it it extended the scope from the mm. the from the what do you call internal network to till our PC. Which is mm -hmm. remotely remotely placed. So right. where is the where is the role for NAT enable and disable? Well, what will make not will be the difference? Not, not at all in use, right? No. Not required actually. But again, if let's say for example this guy is not on the internet. Let's say for example this is an MPLS network. Okay, and I am somewhere over here, and this side you are also having a private IP address. Okay, so if that is somewhere or another uh, somewhere in, in the same range then you might need NAT if not you do not really need NAT but in 99% of the case in SSL in any VPN you do not need NAT you do you remember the dual NAT concept which we did last week last last week the dual NAT uh, the dummy NAT remember that that dummy NAT is only implemented over VPN when these two locations have the same segment right so if you are having a VPN and if you want to have NAT enabled that is the only reason when you will enable NAT because you have the same segment this side and this side if you do not have the same segment NAT is not required Okay, which is 99% of the case. Okay. Clear? Yes, it's clear. So the second question here in lab, we have the same segment, yep. but for the VPN user, we will have the another uh, segment dedicated. So in that case, uh, we will have some specific route to, to 
right. going to the SSL VPN interface. Then in that case, correct. Right. Okay. So how to secure that only company machine having for the client will connect to the VPN. Okay. You don't want to connect VPN by any personal machine with manual install for the client and shared username and password. Um, so if in case you want to make sure that only a company machines um, you know get to it you need to install the 40 client on the company machine but you also have to use something which is called as EMS EMS is basically endpoint management system but they, it's, it's a it's an expensive solution it's another uh... it, is. it is because what happens is endpoint management solution will make sure that your system is up to date first of all it has the right upgrades it is patch management is there everything is there and only with this corporate laptop you would be able to access okay if you're using a personal laptop you will not be able to access now to be honest this laptop that i have right now okay um, my we all you guys all know that my laptop is done. I'm buying a new one. So as of now I'm using my office laptop. Okay, I cannot use anything apart from what I'm doing right now. If I connect to my VPN, I'm gone. Okay, so I can only connect my VPN over here, the 40 client that I have. Let me show you. This is the 40 client. Okay, now this is connected, managed by the EMS. Do you see this? Yes. Yeah, so it is connected and I cannot disconnect this, first of all. Okay, and I can connect to whatever the remote access is that I have. But only from this machine. If I download this installer client to one of my, you know, let's say personal machines and I try to install it from there, it won't work. Why? This guy. Clear? Okay, so so your your office laptop has the uh, 40 gate EMS installed yes. and everything is working based yes. on this. Yeah, so it has the EMS. So basically, it uh, makes sure that I have my system is updated, patch managed, um, no vulnerabilities, no security issues, and all that stuff. Okay. okay. So if you if you take personal any personal laptop and if I put you the 40 client, yeah, and you have the username password, uh, same, I cannot connect. You know, I cannot because as soon as it will it as soon as you will make a connection right the first thing it is going to check is whether you are part whether your system is a part of the domain or not if it is not part of the domain it will not allow you to log in it will fail at the authentication username and password okay, okay? because what happens is when you are creating a connection right SSL handshake happens okay in the SSL handshake it will it will basically see that this is not coming from a um, windows laptop it is basically coming sorry uh, uh, a domain laptop it is coming from a personal pc that's why so ems is required over there to make sure that you only uh, connect with the managed pc not from a unmanaged pc okay. so so but if i do not have the ems you told that uh, you can use the cells yeah, yeah. sign certificate the other certificate you can you can download your 40 client you can do that on your lab as well download the 40 client okay and uh, connect through it you will be able to connect and you can get from anywhere so even if we have this uh, can mention uh, company installed certificate on the firewall side mm -hmm. then um, then also it, it will not it will not be secured no, because uh, to so your requirement is that you should always come from a company PC, right? That for that you need EMS. You cannot. Um, I mean, the, there's no alternate to that, basically. Okay. If you want that you are coming from a managed PC, if you want that you are coming from a updated antivirus PC, updated Windows PC, you need EMS. With just with the SSL VPN, you can only um, make sure what IP the traffic can come. But what client software he has, what client system he has, what kind of a PC he has, that is again, it's an endpoint stuff. For that, you need EMS. 
because it's a anybody can put the personal anybody can log in yeah it. without the ems anybody can log in uh, if he has a username and password So, all right. So that's it. That's the number of questions we have. Now, guys, we'll we'll uh, connect again tomorrow. We'll start off with the with the VPN, IPsec VPN part. All right, and uh, we'll we'll try to you know uh, complete the theory plus lab if it is possible. If not, then probably the ne probably next week. Okay. So till that time, um, see you all, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. -bye. Thanks, Hello, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hello, sir. Sir, uh, Rajesh here. Yeah, tell me. So, sir, uh, can you cover the CA certificates? Which, which certificate? CA certificates. CA. I think uh, there is a. Ha, ha, there was a video for certificates and all. I think that is covered. With the, I've, I've discussed the CA certificate in that as well. Certificate authority. Have you gone okay. through? It? Try. Oh no, no. Yeah. So go through it. It basically covers symmetric cryptography, asymmetric cryptography, public key encryption, SSL handshake, certificates. Everything is covered in that. I so think so. Maybe yeah, for me in my office, right? So there are like close to 400 firewalls. So I need to update like certificates to like 400 firewalls. So this is my scenario. So I oh, can yeah. learn this certificate. So I just want to know like how to deploy and push the change and install them, right? Hmm. Okay. No, that is. Uh, see, I've, what I've covered is basically technology. As in, what is the uh, concept of the technology running behind certificates and uh, SSL handshake and all these things? Right, it, right, right. It, 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 it does not really cover if you want to push a certificate to 400 people. How do you do it? Okay. Yeah. But, but to give you an answer, uh, you normally, if you have 400 firewalls, a manager is a better device to work with. A manager, manager yeah manager will be able to push that information to you know all those firewalls okay yeah yeah so yeah in our organization yeah there is fmg hmm. so it is already there like yeah so i just want to know like what is the best way to implement that so okay okay all right so you can go through that even at least your concepts will be cleared about what exactly this thing is all about Okay, okay, sir. Yeah, let me go through it and yeah, yeah, and yeah, go follow up questions here yeah, yeah. and uh, put all your questions over here. Okay, and then maybe once we are in a session, we'll I'll take those up. Okay. Okay, so okay, sir. Thank you. All right, no problem. So guys, I think let's let's uh, stop. Um, I'm getting hungry now. Okay, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. Thank. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. -bye.